Since the launch of AMD's Ryzen platform, there's been a lot of talk about the effects faster RAM has on the Infinity Fabric and your processor performance. Well, I wanted to put this to the test. I've been using this 2400 megahertz kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, a 32 gig kit, and I went ahead and bought this 3000 megahertz kit as well. So today we're gonna to put these to the test, do some benchmarks and gaming, and see what kind of performance numbers we come up with. For the test components, I'll be using a Ryzen 7 1700 that we kept as stock and then also overclocked to 3.625 gigahertz. I'll also be using a Zotac GTX 1060 Mini, as well as the Biostar X370 GTN Mini ITX motherboard, and a Samsung 960 Evo for the boot drive. A quick side note before we get started, for everybody out there building with the Ryzen platform, make sure you update to the latest BIOS for your motherboard. Always check and make sure when I started this test, I couldn't even get the BIOS star board to run the RAM at 3000 megahertz. I mean, it, it just wasn't running. It wouldn't do it. It would only go up to 2400. But after the recent BIOS update, added memory support, and now it's, ru it's running fine. I was able to run all my tests at, at both speeds. So just make sure you've got the latest and greatest BIOS and all the drivers and good stuff for your system because Ryzen is new and they're making improvements all the time. So let's get down to the actual numbers. Taking a look at the charts, you see that at stock speeds, there was a boost to pretty much every CPU bound benchmark across the board. You can see from 0.5% all the way up to a 9% gain in performance with Geekbench, the single core score, jumping up a full 9%. That was a fantastic result, as well as the Passmark CPU test going up 5.9%. When overclocked, we saw the same kind of results uh, with performance boosting in around the same range. The only outlier was the CPU-Z multi-core, which for some odd reason reported a lower score. Not really sure why that is. I ran that test multiple times and it just kept giving me the same score. Really confused by that one. Now sliding over to the synthetic GPU benchmarks. They were interesting as well. The gains were not as large, uh, obviously because these tests are really based on the GPU rather than the CPU, but we did see from one to 4% for a lot of these tests when overclocked and on stock settings. So that was pretty consistent as well. So you do see a little bump in performance there, even though they're not CPU bound tasks. Now sliding over to real world gaming tests. I tested Metro, Last Light, Tomb Raider, and Arkham Asylum. And then I got similar results that you would expect based on the prior test. In Tomb Raider and Arkham Asylum, I gained two frames per second, and in Metro Last Light, I gained eight. Now that was odd. I, I guess Metro uses the CPU a little bit more than the other two games. That was a repeatable score that I kept getting uh, consistently. You do get a little tiny boost there, so if you're running a game that's hitting 59 frames a second and you want 60, this is a way to go about getting it. Judging by these results, I'm guessing you would see an even bigger gain if you went with even faster RAM. A lot of people are using 3200 megahertz kits, and that seems to be the sweet spot in terms of price to performance obviously if you're going up to like 4,000 those kits are super super expensive uh, really not a good investment so if you're building a Ryzen system I would say definitely get the fastest RAM that you can while the improvement was small it was an improvement you definitely do get more performance from having faster RAM so on average you'll see anywhere from a 2 to 4 percent increase when you're going from 2400 to 3000 megahertz and these are pretty substantial gains uh, now it's not monumental you know we're not, we're not talking 20 percent gains here but this is a decent performance gain. Uh, is it enough to justify going out and purchasing a more expensive RAM? That's gonna be up to you. Now I will be trying to overclock this RAM and I will add those test results to the article on the website. I'll drop a link for that below. You can see the results in this video and as I build out future tests with new games and, and new benchmarks and stuff, I'll just add those to the article. As always guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.